Good evening, Instagram. Dr. Brett Gilbert here. Very excited. I've got three questions with Dr. Brett Gilbert this evening, and we're going all the way down under to Australia. So this project, the, these interviews are all about raising awareness of endodontics in the, in the globe, across the globe. And so I've been able to fortunately interview some amazing colleagues in Canada, the US, Mexico, Costa Rica with Dr. Tiapa, over into London, and now, tonight, really, really excited and honored to, to have a guest join me from Australia. So Dr. Mehdi Rahimi uh, goes by at The Gentle Endo. And he's a really, really big teacher and big in practice and um, really excited to have him. Hi, Mustafa9511. So glad you're with me tonight on a, on a Saturday evening. Three questions with Dr. Brett Gilbert. So we're going to be joined again by Dr. Mehdi Rahimi. He's down in Australia. So it's going to be Sunday morning for, for Mehdi. And uh, we're going to have a good chat about endodontics across the globe and uh, really excited. So I see... Dr. Rahimi is, uh, is there, so we'll just see if we can get him to request to join in. So three questions with Dr. Brett Gilbert. This is Save Your Tooth Month, uh, May 2019. The AAE is Save Your Tooth Month, and we're saving teeth all around the world. And my, my colleague, Dr. Rahimi, is going to join me, and we're going to talk all about how they're doing it in Australia. And there he is. Dr. Rahimi, welcome. Thank you. Good to see you. Good, Good to see you. Thank you. How's, how's Sunday morning treating you? Oh, good. Uh, one relaxing day with the family. <laughs> you need that, don't you? You got to recharge the batteries. That's right, yeah. So I use um, some weekends teaching and other weekends, obviously, got to spend time with his wife and the little one. She's 16 months year old. Oh. Uh, Celine, baby Celine. Yeah. Nice. So she was. Uh, What's that? She was with me for, for breakfast and um, she was crying a bit because I had to spend a bit of time with you obviously this morning uh, for a good cause. And so I'm going to go back to the family straight after. <laughs> All right. We won't keep you too long. So your, your buddy from the U.S. goes and drags you away from your family on a Sunday morning. So, but really grateful for you joining us, Mehdi. So I've been doing these interviews with colleagues around the world with the goal of spreading the awareness of endodontics and uh, who better to describe, to discuss, to validate, you know, the science and the practice of endodontics than the experts. And, you know, certainly you down in Australia, you're doing a ton of teaching. You've got a thriving practice. Um, I know you're involved with organized dentistry. So really grateful for you to join me. I'm excited to learn more about you. And uh, we won't keep you too long, though, I promise. Thank, thank you. Thanks, um, Brett. No, um, I think you're doing a great thing. Um, I've been watching some of your, um, even prior to you uh, tuning in and sort of um, contacting me, I've been watching a lot of your Instagram um, uh, videography and posts, and I think it's a really good thing. I think uh, we need that in endodontics, and um, kudos to you for starting something like this. It was about time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for acknowledging me for that, and I'll be honest and tell you, this has been so fun for me, and no more so. You know, I've been reaching out to you and talking to Miriam, who I know probably is uh, your social media coordinator. And I'm just so excited sure. to get you on and someone of your stature, but also just to have this chat face to face all the way across the globe, across the timeline. Uh, so really, thank you, Mehdi, and uh, really excited to learn more about you. So again, this is three questions with Dr. Brett Gilbert. I'm here with Dr. Mehdi Rahimi. He goes by at the gentle endo with some underscores in between the and gentle. And uh, that's your practice name, right? Gentle Endodontics, which I love. Correct. That's right. Yes, yes. Um, Beautiful. So, yeah, go. yeah. Yes, yes. Um, uh, so go ahead. Um, I think you, uh, yeah. Um, uh, question one, was it? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's get yeah. into it. So here he is. I'll, let's I'll get, it. Yeah. Let's, let's sure. get these questions there. So, the, so I'll the, ask the, you, you know, Mehdi, tell us. So, you know, we, we'd love to, um, look, what's that? I think the um, internet, so, so I get a bit of a delay lapse, but it's okay. I'll, I'll do my best. Okay, I'll do the I'll same. Do... We'll, we'll, we'll work with what we've got. Sure, um, no, it's all good. So here's question number one for you. So question number one is, you know, obviously a lot of students watch this, you know, young people trying to decide what to do with their lives and careers. Can you tell us a bit about what inspired you to go into dentistry? And then from that, what was that moment like, that, that decision process where you made that decision that you wanted to specialize in endodontics? Sure. Um, 
So I, I go back in time. Um, I was, I was uh, born and bred in New Zealand, but my family are Persian in origin. Um, and a distant uh, family member of mine is Professor Mahmoud Torbinijad. So he's the, as you know, author of the textbooks, uh, various textbooks, one of them being the principles and practice of endodontics. Um, and he's the inventor of MTA. Uh, so having family ties um, definitely drew me towards dentistry, um, both parents being medical practitioners, they're both gynecologists. Um, one thing I found about their life was uh, we obviously had a lot of times um, babysitters and things like that at home, and they did a lot of on-calls and night shifts. So I, I did like the, I guess I, was, I grew up in a, a family where medicine in, in general was um, big, um, and um, having uh, my uncle Torabinijad being in, in the field of dentistry made me feel as though, well, dentistry... Um, might be the thing for me. And I was also quite a hands-on person. Um, I, I like technology. So I sort of moved towards dentistry and I thought, well, I can choose a lifestyle out of it rather than have to be somewhere or have a beeper on like my parents did. Um, and they would get beeped and then I'd have to be at the hospital at odd hours of the night and early hours of the morning. So I didn't want to do that. I thought, and I, I guess I liked the hands-on part, so I didn't want to just... Um, uh, in, with some people that they, they choose a field where they don't have to be hands-on, but I was very hands-on. So I went into dentistry. I chose dentistry uh, when I got into both medicine and dentistry. And I went through the University of Otago, um, New Zealand. So um, that's the only university in New Zealand um, teaching dentistry. And I graduated um, with uh, sort of first-class honours, if you like, or distinction. Um, and I was always interested in the research side as well, because prior to that, I did biomedical sciences or biomedical engineering. Um, so I was always interested in research as a background. And I visited Loma Linda a number of times, um, did get into the training program there. Um, no uh, sort of bias because I have family ties with Mahmoud, but um, I, I went through the interviews and uh, got interviewed with, uh, by Leif Blackland and uh, Mahmoud Torbinijad on, I still recall, a Sunday outside the normal <laughs> uh, interview times because um, it was just, I think it was difficult for them um, to interview me because I had to get, uh, they preferred to see me. So I traveled there. Anyway, I, due to family reasons, I decided to stay and go through um, Melbourne training program. And I got uh, trained by um, Harold Messer at the start and then uh, followed by um, Professor Peter Pavishos. And Harold, I'm sure everyone knows, is a retired emeritus professor who wrote um, a number of chapters and he's, he's highly published as well. Anyway, through why did I choose endodontics after dentistry? <sighs> to be honest with you, uh, I spoke to Professor Torbinich and said, what do I do? You know, <laughs> I like to specialize. I want to teach. And I want to be good at one thing. I'm, I'm not the best at doing all trades, you know. And um, I prefer to be good at one thing, really good at one thing. And I, I thought specializing was the best. And maybe, it was, again, my parents being both specialists um, uh, maybe influenced me in a way. So I um, didn't really like endodontics at the start. <laughs> because um, two years out, or sorry, within two years especially, the first few months, I found it difficult to access teeth, oh, yeah. get into the pulp chamber. And I still remember this lovely old guy. Um, I think he was in his 60s. And he was very forgiving because um, he had a gold crown and a calcified canal system. And I, for the first time, used a transmetal burr, tungsten carbide burr. And I never used it before because my boss gave it to me, my you know, mentor at the time. And I went right through the furcation. And the tooth was unrestorable. <laughs> so, it anyway, it happens. Uh, yeah, it happens, you know. So I, I, I said, I said to uh, Mahmoud, you know, Prof. Torbinijad, um, you know, what do you think? Um, shall I specialize? And he said, Well, go to do orthodontics. <laughs> orthodontics, way do it. And I didn't really like orthodontics, so I did a long course at Sydney Uni after I graduated. So because we didn't get taught orthodontics very well at uni, so I did the long course, and I it was a bit sort of 
difficult, was boring, and maybe not as hands-on. Um, I hope also London's not watching this. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I then went to the outskirts of um, um, Sydney at the time. Now it's like central because Sydney's obviously expanded. But from, <laughs> from a central region called Chatswood, you know, which I live in right now, and I, I've, one of my practices is here, I went to Liverpool, you know, out south, which back then was more outskirts, but now it's central because, as I said, Anyway, there, there was a practice I worked out of. Um, actually, they call themselves Gentle Dental Care. And um, there, there was multiple dentists, and I got the odd hours of work, work period. So from uh, 9 till 10 p.m., I worked on Fridays. And um, on Thursdays, the same hours. On Saturdays, 8 till 6 p.m., on Sundays, 8 till 5. So I got all the odd hours because I wanted the job, you know. I sure. wanted to get my hands dirty. And they had the philosophy that they wouldn't refer out um, unless they really had to. So we, I, I was doing a lot of nurses. Um, so it was either extract or extirpate. So mm -hmm. a lot of extirpations meant I would have to do the visit two and three. And I thought I was getting very good at it. Uh, to be honest, in hindsight, I wasn't very good at it. But I thought I was because I was doing more of it. And the more you do something, you develop a liking towards it. So Prof. Tarunjad visited in 2004. You know, listening to him, then I visited him, and then 2005, um, uh, um, I decided I'll apply for endodontics. And simply it was because I was doing more of it, and the others thought at the practice I was good at it. So I sort of borrowed a bit of MTA out of um, Torbinija, you know, and I brought it and I kind of used it on patients. I didn't know how to apply it, it was hard to manipulate. You know, I thought I was doing okay. <laughs> Uh, in hindsight, I saw some of my cases afterwards in private practice because obviously these patients come your way down the track as you specialize and come back to Sydney. And I was like, oh, what was I doing? You know, I was missing MB2s all the time. <laughs> I thought everything, every upper molar had three canals, that type of thing. Anyway, that was the long story. I, well, I probably um, spoke for too long now. Um, but that was the long story of how I became interested. But the more you do something and the more you do procedures, and I was doing a lot of emergencies, the more you're going to like it. At the start, I didn't like it, but with time, I did. With, men, I guess, long-distance men mentorship and um, having Prof. Tourinja in the background. Wow, that, that's fascinating, Matty. So, so for those that don't know, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Torbinajad is royalty in endodontic history uh, for being a wonderful educator at Loma Linda for so many years, for really developing and bringing MTA, sort of the first bioactive material, to the forefront. And he's a relative of yours. So how amazing and what an incredible influence for you. And um, really, really struck by that, Mehdi. And then also that really when push came to shove, I mean, endo is so hard when you are starting. And for those younger dentists watching, students, we've all been through it. Like here, you're, you're hearing Dr. Rahimi explain to you that he was busting through furcations too when he was accessing. So it's about continued practice. But what really struck me about your story is that what really it came down to, like for all of us endodontists, it came down to extirpate or extract. And you, of course, wanted to save those teeth. And so you got in there, you started getting those pulps out, and next thing you know, it sort of grows on you after a little bit. But it's yeah. really tough. But um, really fascinated. I had no idea, obviously, your connection to Dr. Torbinajad, but obviously I've met him before. He carries himself with such dignity, and I have so much respect for him. So how cool that he's been such a big influence in your life and uh, that you have him sort of to rely on. So I know I see there's a lot of my endodontic colleagues uh, watching, Dr. Ravi Singh, Dr. Bill Gil Gilberto Galvez. They all, you know, we all look up to Dr. Torbinajet as you do. So very, very cool, man. Awesome. Um, love hearing the story of how we all sort of fall into this dental track. And you come from two parents that are doctors, you know, gynecology, obviously the time constraints and everything with that. And, and you know, other than your buddy from the U.S. pulling you away from your family on a Sunday morning, it's a pretty good life, right? We, we really have these good hours that allow us to have the great career and also have the great family life. So very, very cool. Okay, so I'd be really curious. So the, again, I'm here with, with Dr. Mehdi Rahimi. He's at the Gentle Endo, coming to us from Australia. From you, you are you're in Melbourne or Sydney now? You're in Sydney, you said. Chad's Sydney. With yeah. So coming Correct. live from Sydney, Australia, on Sunday morning, Saturday night here in Chicago. So honored and grateful to have you. So question number two for three questions with Dr. Brett Gilbert. 
So tell us, I mean, I know you teach, I know you're involved with organized dentistry, you obviously practice. Tell us like, what about endodontics? What gets you excited? What gets you up and energized? Obviously you've been in the game for a while now, you're in your career as much as I am. What gets you excited about endodontics at this point? I think the most exciting part of endodontics to me, it, I'd say, you know, without a doubt, um, it's the fastest growing in terms of technology in dentistry. And so I think that newer devices are coming out day by day, newer files, uh, more conservative ways to disinfect a root canal system, son endo gentle way of being at the forefront at this point in time. And I just, I just feel 3D technology that we can use. Um, all of that means that there's a lot um, that we can also, you know, I, I'm in my element when I teach. That's the truth. And I get a lot of energy out of it. And I feel that that's what keeps me up to date as well. <laughs> because I have to sort of prepare um, lectures for students to dentists to uh, sitting with the postgraduates at Melbourne University, which I visit um, uh, regularly on a regular basis. It just means that it keeps you up to date with the world of technology and dentistry. And I certainly think that endodontics has advanced a long way. And um, it's come a long way since I graduated in 2008. And I think that's what keeps me excited. There's another thing that keeps me excited is that um, out of gentle endo, we try to do things as painless as possible. Um, so we are changing the perception of a lot of older patients or a lot of patients that have had bad stories and uh, phobics, um, in, um, inclusive of my own sister, for example, who we looked into ways to make endodontics um, less um, phobic or this, uh, pa more painless for the patient and more comfortable, more efficient. And getting people out of pain to me is very important. So staying back for me, even though my wife who's tuned in right now doesn't like it when I go get home past 8 p.m. So there's a, a curfew for me, which is 8 p.m. For some, it might be five, <laughs> especially if they're cosmetic dentists. But honestly, getting I, I, I last just last week I had um, two cancer patients with out of control um, sort of endodontic infection. Um, and just others that were in severe agony that would see me at 6 or 7 p.m. at night, getting them out of pain or, you know, at odd hours, early mornings, and being able to do it in a very efficient, comfortable way for them, they're very thankful because, as you know, toothache pain, pain of dental origin, they say, uh, we haven't experienced it, you and I, uh, is worse than childbirth. Um, so um, a lot of... Um, Patients I see go, oh, this is the worst pain I've ever had. Do anything you can, doctor, to get me out of pain. And that gives me another thrill and um, obviously um, makes me happy to do this job, um, to be able to get people out of pain and help them. That's so awesome. I mean, literally, we, we're going to have to connect, you know, and meet one day. You just answered the question exactly how I would. The technology gets me excited. You, you said it. Your quote was, you know, I'm in my element when I'm teaching. And for me, it's like, you know, people jump off of buildings and out of airplanes for the adrenaline rush because you're, you're so in the moment, you can't, you don't think about anything else. And that's how I feel when I'm teaching. And I just, just love it. And, um, and I agree. I mean, the, the gift of this procedure for how it can change a patient in so much pain. And you know, you call the patient that, that evening or the next morning, this patient who was in this horrific pain, literally their life stops until this pain can stop. You call them the next morning, they're like, you know what, I'm, I'm doing great. Like, I, I feel great. And it's just an amazing procedure. And that's why I think raising awareness to the public, you know, that there are specialists that save teeth, that do root canal treatment on such a different level. Again, with the technology as it's emerging, with the skills. And, and as, you, as your practice is called, gentle endodontics. I mean, the concept of being able to carry someone through this procedure in such an efficient, comfortable, compassionate way. Uh, and my wife always says, where there's smoke, there's fire. And the reason people are afraid of root canals is because there's been some really bad experiences over time. And that's how the reputation gets developed. But you and I have this great opportunity to get to dispel these myths on a day-to-day -day basis. And to me, that's just so rewarding with endodontics. So 
Um, so awesome. So we're through two questions. I'm here with Dr. Mehdi Rahimi, live from Sydney, Australia on Sunday morning. He goes by at the Gentle Endo on Instagram. I know you're big on Facebook too. His practice is Gentle Endodontics. Uh, so we're on the third question now. So we sort of alluded to it in question number two, but tell me, you know, there's so many things happening in our world as far as endodontics and the science and technology. What do you see coming down the road over the next year, three years, five years that you really see as, a, as an ability to advance our specialty forward? Yeah, I think that um, from the time I graduated in 2008, 2009 period, um, it's about 10 years. So over the last decade, what I've seen is a lot on regenerative endodontics. Um, so obviously teeth with, pulpless teeth with uh, infection um, and us being able to regenerate uh, and um, more predictably understanding it. You know, so, so the science behind it is helping us to improve on being able to regenerate those teeth um, and regrowing the tooth, if you like, whether whether the tissue inside the root canal system is bone type material, or whether it's actually, you know, the true pulp, uh, we still don't quite understand. But it seems to be more likely to be bone type material. But just strengthening those teeth that are weaker and getting rid of infection without having to do the entire treatment, um, I think, is one advance in endodontics that I think the next 10 years will keep on advancing. And the other advance in endodontics is the conservative approach. Um, we're still coming to terms with that. So there's a, a balance we need to reach. And um, I can't say that I am con completely the conservative endodontist, like sort of towards the, what we call the ninja axis, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have certainly, over the past um, three, four years, um, reduced the size of my accesses, and I'm trying to um, do smaller taper preps, and maybe I've also reduced my apical sizes just slightly. And um, I'm finding that irrigant deliveries um, do help a lot, and things like, again, gentle wave, sun, um, mean that in future, because we also, in some of these cases, if we could do real-time 3D, you know, and um, have a way to see what we're doing, like my dad does or my mum does in laparoscopic procedures, uh, where they can see things real-time, three-dimensionally, it would be nice to see the root canal and then be able to address it and disinfect it and see, for example, the irrigant getting safely to the different regions of the root canal system. I think that's the future of endodontics, really. So we know that one of the main reasons for failure under our hands, obviously yourself and my hands, um, Brett, is um, fractures. So by being conservative, but keeping that balance, so we, we can also disinfect more predictably than even if you had a large access into the tooth and you went to large sizes or whatever, or you had large tapers. I think it'd be nice to have small, um, uh, accesses and be able to put something onto that tooth and and really predictably see what you're doing three-dimensionally and clean it as better than before uh, means that you preserve the tooth structure and there's less risk of fractures and things like that which are the number one reasons for failure in the endodontic world when the endodontist does the treatment especially because we get the weaker teeth often but at the same time if it's an, a tooth that hasn't had treatment before, well, then we can make it more predictable for that patient down the track. I think that's um, definitely two sides. So one, if we could regenerate, that would be my number one option. If we couldn't and we had to do the treatment, then keep it as conservative as possible, but disinfect it properly, because that's where I think at this point in my, um, I guess, I, I do my own reading, but I have a bias. I think that We've got to keep the balance. Um, I don't want the pendulum to swing like the pendulum swang with the implant world. So at some point, everybody was doing them, and then we realized that we're reading papers now, and the papers state that when you have implants, it um, doesn't matter which hands do, do them. You know, 46% need 
this is a systematic review. It's a well, you know, I'm, I'm talking high level of evidence. Um, 46% of those implants have maintenance issues. They're a high maintenance procedure. And we do see failures, um, especially in the upper arch and the areas like the sinus regions, um, whereby, you know, the failures happen six to 10 years later. So I don't want to see failures in conservative endodontics. I'm concerned about that. But at the same time, I'm a fan of doing things smaller, conservative. And I just think we need to work on 3D technology further to make it real time and work on um, being able to disinfect these canals well, predictably and safely, efficiently, uh, using maybe future devices even. <laughs> We're at the gentle wave stage or the, you know, the agitation stage and disinfection stage, but we've got to go a little further, in my opinion. So we can even do this predictably um, by maybe robots, maybe in Antarctica. Doctors don't have to do any of those because I teach Antarctica doctors, or I have in the past. With, I have to teach them how to access teeth breath because there's no endodontist there. Maybe we could do it to an astronaut if they've got all the equipment there by <laughs> robots in the future. So I reckon we've got a long way to go, but it's very exciting. You, you know, and, and nothing you're describing feels beyond reach to me, but um, just to comment, because a couple things, and I, I really, we, we're really aligned, I think, in how we're thinking right now, which is really cool because we're halfway around the world. We're both teaching dentists and students and we're both of, of the same mind. So, you know, I have, I've, I've interestingly been privy to some, some focus groups on regenerative type of products, you know, and one thing that came up that I thought was really interesting is that there are companies now doing tooth banking. So for instance, pediatric or primary teeth are extracted, the tooth is banked much like cord blood um, in an effort to provide some type of personalized stem cell, you know, an auto stem cell for, for later use, who knows what that might mean. Um, and then also the ability now with a lot of research and development at the universities all over the world of different, you know, matrices, you know, a, a full on, uh, you know, um, injectable environment to promote the regenerative process within a tooth. So a lot of really exciting things on that front. Um, I agree with you. I, I, it's like, you know, especially being on Instagram with a lot of these conservative approaches and I'm all for it. I mean, it makes sense except that there is this tenant that we have to still remind ourselves, which is disinfection. And there is that happy medium, I believe. And I agree, My, everything I do has shrunken down, but admittedly, I still wanna create enough space to be able to feel like I've adequately disinfected. Now, one thing I've never thought about that you just totally planted the seed for me is the concept of being able to visualize that, that, that reach, that, that uh, solution getting into the very end, that apical third, that would really be cool, like a visual confirmation, because even something like the gentle wave, and I know that that's not you know, available in Australia, I have had the opportunity to, to, to work with it. I was actually a beta tester back in 2015. And it's amazing, but it is somewhat of blind faith, right? You know, it covers the access, you press on the foot pedal, and you just have to hope and assume that it is doing what it says. And obviously we're seeing some really incredible results from it. So I'm very excited to see where that technology and others probably that are like it will, will carry us. Because I think yeah. that might be the answer with, you know, being able to assure the disinfection with the conservation as well. So um, really amazing. And, and obviously one thing we didn't talk about, but I think, you know, with 3D and I know the visibility within the canal would be difficult, but some of the dynamic navigation that we're starting to see as well, you know, really that real time of being able to know where that tooth and canal are in time and space and being able to have the, the technology guide your hand keys right to that spot. So, so much to be excited about. It, it's, a, it's just a great field and that's why I think it's so important that our voices be heard so that the public, students, you know, we can inspire other students to kind of carry forward and join our, our ranks. Just like, you know, Dr. Torbinajet was influential for you. I think mentorship, as you mentioned, is long distance for you was such a, uh, you know, seminal person in our field. But just across the board, I think that we really have to focus on mentorship. And that's been a common theme in these interviews that most of us have had some type of mentorship or have provided it. And it's such a valuable resource. So, man, it's so cool to hear you. Um, I, we're, our thoughts are right in line, so it really reassures me personally, you know, to know that colleagues all over the world are thinking the same way and are excited about the same thing. So really cool, Mehdi. Um, so again, this is three questions with Dr. Brett Gilbert. I'm here with Dr. Mehdi Rahimi at the Gentle Endo with underscore in between the and Gentle on Instagram. So definitely follow him. He's 
really an incredible endodontist down in Australia doing a lot of great things for dentistry. So at this point in the program, we'd like to open it up. If you had a question for me, I'd love to be able to answer one for you. And again, just so grateful for you stepping away from the family on a Sunday morning to join me. Yes, yeah, so I think it'd be nice to have you visit Sydney. <laughs> have you, uh, um, because I know you um, obviously visit um, nearby um, countries, um, Canada. So any plans to come to Sydney? Um, I'd love, I'd love with, to make one. <laughs> yeah, well, it'd be, it'd be nice to have you um, visit Sydney and sort of what you're doing there. Uh, I, I, and I, I think what gave you, um, I mean, uh, th this is sort of, to me, what the Instagram thing and social media, um, we live in Australia. It's probably somewhat different to the US, um, especially amongst the older generational endodontists. Um, they, might, they might look at myself, uh, who at this point um, uh, obviously is more involved in social media, but I'm obviously learning about even Instagram and what you're doing there. And um, how did you get introduced to it? Um, who gave you the idea of, I guess, going public? And uh, what was what did you think in your mind? Because um, we don't take risks in Australia, so, so you know we're a bit risk adverse, and we're always worried about. Okay, um, I'm not going to go on Facebook. I'm not going to have any because of um, social media and the downsides of it. But at the same time, I think it's really good to open up to the public and um, tell them what we do, which I think is interesting. And at the end of it, our reason for what we do is to save natural teeth. But once again, my question to you is, why are you doing what you're doing? And, and, and how did you get introduced to it? That's I mean, a great question. So interestingly enough, as of October 2017, I wasn't on any social media. I, I was completely, for the reasons you're probably describing, I didn't want to jump in. I didn't want to be, you know, I just didn't, just didn't feel it. It wasn't inspiring to me at that point. I saw it from the negative mindset, but then I had a colleague actually that was working with me at the time. And she really encouraged me to, to kind of think about getting on because you're seeing uh, endodontists present cases and it's an opportunity to share what you're doing. So once uh, I got onto Facebook and Instagram, I instantly took to it and I started to feel the power of it and the influence of being able to, you know, like for you and I, Mehdi, you know, we get in front of a big lecture hall or a big, you know, inter international meeting, and it's a thrill. And you love being able to reach those people sitting there. But then I started to create some video content. I created the endo files, which was the idea was just one minute snippets, little tips and tricks that someone might look at now, or they might look at it in a year and find it on YouTube. And it could be helpful, like just that little pearl of wisdom that they might've needed to help give them some confidence. And I think that what we're seeing is that there's a tremendous need for endodontics to save teeth. There's also a tremendous confidence crisis in the doctors that perform it. And so I wanna be able to give endodontics more life, like for dentists to realize like here, Dr. Mehdi Rahimi just explained that when he started out, he got into a tooth with a gold crown and went right through the frication. Guess what? I've eliminated frications too. We've all done that. That's the learning. So you're just at the beginning. So you can't let it shut you down. You have to continue. Um, but the honest truth, so the video content, all that, you know, it gives me an opportunity to be creative, Mehdi, which I really enjoy because as endodontists, you know, we, we can do a lot of wonderful things, but being creative isn't necessary. We have to be improv improvisational, of course, and innovative, but being creative. So what really prompted me to start this segment, the three questions, was the Root Cause movie, which I'm sure is near and dear to you as well because it took place right in your hometown. Um, that really bugged me, you know, and that got under yeah. my skin. And I said to myself, you know, how can people watch this movie on Netflix? And that's what they know about endodontics and root canal specialists. I said, the colleagues that I know pretty much across the board that are endodontists are brilliant, brilliant people, caring individuals, science-based, compassionate, and most, most incredibly, just so passionate about what they do. So I said to myself, Let's get them on here. Like, let's hear from them so that people, again, will have this lasting resource to be able to say, well, here, here's Dr. Rahimi in Australia. I mean, you listen to this guy talk and you say to yourself, well, that movie was a bunch of BS. Like, I see now this is legitimate and the people that are doing it are legitimate and we're the experts and we want people to know that root canal treatment is safe, effective and incredibly amazing to save your natural tooth. And so, um, so the, the gist of it is, is a little bit that I love being creative, 
Number two, I love reaching people, which I felt, you know, if it's only confined to the lecture halls, it limits our reach. And this gives us a greater reach. But most importantly, I think raising awareness. And I see that, you know, it was an idea, you know, Mehdi, and I just wanted to sort of see how it went. I did the first couple, but I see that it does have some potential to reach people and be an impact. And when someone like you from halfway across the world is willing to join me and we create this global community on Instagram, I feel like it can only be a benefit to the specialty. I'm sorry, I lost you for a second, but we need to carry yeah, on okay. that legacy. And so maybe this yeah. is the way that we do it. Yeah, so in, in Australia, um, you, you, you discussed the root cause, and I, I think everything you said, I totally agree with, totally like um, envy you for what you're doing, and I would uh, support you in any way. A um, couple of things in Australia, uh, obviously, the director of this movie, Root Cause, um, um, made this movie. Um, uh, there were actors, actresses, um, uh, but a number of doctors were mentioned. Um, you also watch other clips about endodontic therapy, and sometimes a doctor may not even describe the process very well. I'm talking about a medical doctor. And they may say negative things about it, um, and a negative uh, thought process comes across people. Um, I thought by um, the society, I'm, I'm the president of the Australian Society of Endodontology, the New South Wales Division, and I'm in, in touch with the federal. Um, we thought, um, I guess the statements made through various uh, ways from uh, what we call the dental board here, uh, if we get rid of that root cause um, documentary, everything will go away. But um, I just saw in one day, two patients, they were both cancer patients. They both obviously had endodontic therapy and uh, it told me, and a, a number of other patients which are possibly the patients that um, are more towards healthy living and they're worried about root canals again and they're, you know, they're organic and you know, all that type of stuff. That, that we might, and, and they're all worried about it and it really um, taught me to talk about it. So I think that's one, I think, very good way to, to do it. Another way is um, we're getting an oncologist, professor, at Wollongong University to discuss it amongst other experts, um, professors in endodontics, and probably it's better we don't discuss that. We get the extractionists, that's the, you know, the oral maxillofacial surgeons or the other specialists um, and oncologists to discuss this topic of, you know, should be worried, be worried about um, endodontic therapy, which the body, you know, obviously heals when, when you do the right treatment and the body likes so the pain goes away and this whole thing about root cause has made you know we thought it's gone finished by the time they take that documentary away from netflix but it hasn't it's created another wave of concern for patients and i think um this uh, particular interview that's going to be designed um in the next few months um will be run out of australia and i'm trying to get the av person i actually got him to log on to your thing today so that um, the AV person who knows the technology, we may be able to um, simulcast, um, if, if you like, through um, right. Facebook and Instagram and discuss it amongst experts. Um, I think something similar may have happened at the American Association of Endotology, but I don't know if there was actually a professor in oncology who's willing to actually discuss it at depth. And we get people that are the anti-vax. I don't know if you've heard of that, the sure. anti-vax. We have that here. Yeah. And um, all I could say, in short, because we don't have time to discuss this topic, but we will discuss it at depth um, at this simulcast, and I'm hoping you can join in Absolutely. Or with it, uh, is, is the fact that all of these people who have cancer, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a random occurrence, but there are some predispositions to it, or there can be even genetics, you know, behind it. We don't understand it. It could be multifactorial, but all of these people also drank water and, you know, breathe air. So, so it can happen to anyone, really. And um, there are papers, like a random paper, um, somewhere says, oh, if you have endodontic therapy, it reduces cancer. Like, it's just, we can link things to things. And at the end of it, I think we need to look at the bigger picture. If there's bacteria, and the bacteria is the cause of it. If bacteria gets into the bloodstream, if the body cannot cope with it, the few bacteria, you'll be in the hospital bed, 
you know, on, on heavy antibiotics or you'll be on your deathbed. Yeah. So um, we, we treat bacteria that get in, but nails have bacteria. Do we pull the nail out? You know, hair has bacteria. Do we pull that out? So um, I, I, think, I think we need to discuss it. And I'm, I'm, I'm not the, obviously the best person to discuss it. We'll have the best people there. So I think social media helps because um, that way we can get across to people um, to listen to us and to listen to the science, the real science behind it and the concept of what we're doing really. And um, that, that, I think that would help maintain and preserve more teeth. Because we, you know, if we end up with decay, what other choice do we have, really? Extraction, right? Sure. So I think we preserve our teeth because then we preserve function, muscles, you know. The TMJ works well when we're older if we have a full set of teeth. And um, I, I, again, I, I really, really envy what you're doing and uh, your teachings um, along social media, I think, is, is the future. And me being the president of the ASC for the first time, we're doing live, live streaming among society members to all states, to people that cannot travel to be in a lecture hall uh, via the same technology. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think, you know, web-based learning is a, is a big thing in future. Um, um, I admire what you're doing. So well done. And Thank I you. appreciate you um, getting me on this. And on, on Dr. Torbinijak, for those of you who are in Sydney, he's visiting on the 25th of September. We're running an ASC ADA course. So it's a society and um, dental association day course. And he's the keynote presenter amongst um, Professor Paul Abbott, who's probably the most oh, highly- I know Paul as well, of course. Yeah, and um, we've got Russell Vickers on pain, so neuralgia, and he's the leading, I, I say one of the leading researchers in pain and the technology of stem cells in that. And um, he's doing a lot of good stem cell work out of China right now because of ethics approval and things. And Russell Vickers has written the most uh, recent edition. For those of you who are students or who are dentists that want to read something about dental pain, then I'd recommend... Uh, Australian um, endodontic journal, um, the supplement, the special supplement, August 2018, the entire journal, all the articles are neurologists and pain experts, and they discuss pain and neurology is one of those ones which I've seen quite a number of patients, obviously, throughout my career where they might have had overzealous treatment where they didn't need, and it was maybe misdiagnosis, and at the end of the day, they're suffering um, from pain. So we have a number of... Um, you know, um, a, a very good day course um, in 2018. Then we um, invite Teruchi in 2000 and, uh, sorry, in 2019, I meant the September 25, um, one, one year behind for some reason. <laughs> it, is, it is Sunday. Um, yes, of so, course. So I'm recovering. Uh, so yeah, and, and um, in 2020 in March, for those of you listening, we will also do a live um, broadcast, a live stream of um, Yoshi Teruchi. And he's interesting for me because um, you know, us endodontists, we're always like, oh, you know, bypass the file. We, we don't want to damage the tooth. And he just makes us look like fools because within five, ten minutes, he removes anything. So anything. I think he's also interesting because technology, again, um, is just going to advance and advance and advance. And that's what I love about the world of the science of medicine and dentistry, and specifically in endodontics. I just think we just keep going from one step to the next step. And thank you. Wow, you got you've got some exciting educational opportunities coming to your association. I, I I wish I could attend. And for those of you who haven't heard Dr. Torbinajed speak, you definitely want to you want to be there for that. And you know, for those students who are thinking about endodontics, I mean, understanding pain and neuralgia is so critical to understanding what pulpal symptoms are to to know that difference and that contrast. So all of that's incredible. And uh, Yoshi does an incredible job teaching how to remove files. I have his kit. Um, I've also been, I haven't never actually heard him live lecture, but he's got wonderful case examples and teachings on YouTube. For those that want to look up Yoshi Teruchi and the Teruchi file retrieval kit. Um, and now there's another, uh, the Endo Cowboy coming out of, of Europe. And um, so there's a lot of opportunities to, to potentially remove a separated instrument and just so much to be excited about. And you're right in the center of it down there, Mehdi. So congratulations to Thanks. you and, and all that you've accomplished and, this has been so great. I really look forward to the day I get to meet you face to face. I think we're obviously very like-minded and uh, I'd love to collaborate with you in any way that we can as we move down the road.
Likewise, and um, well, we've got to stay in touch. You're doing a really great thing. Well done for it. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure other endodontists in Australia um, hit you up. We, in fact, went on. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if it's uh, appropriate, but we have a Facebook site called Dental Product Review. Over 14,000, 15,000 dent dentists are on it. Wow. And special. So I sort of posted something saying if it's inappropriate, remove. Because, I, you know, sometimes we're meant to not. But I said, you know, look up your name. So oh, I'm hoping that dentists come your way and listen to you because um, I've watched a few of the clips uh, uh, prior to you even approaching me and I think it's a good thing. And I think more people need to um, follow your footsteps. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. This has been just such a pleasure. For those that know us as endodontists, we're just, we're so into what we do. So it's Saturday night. I can't think of anything much more fun than talking to my great colleague <laughs> down in Australia. So thank you for your time. Uh, get back to your family, rest and restore for a big week ahead. Uh, Dr. Mehdi Rahimi at The Gentle Endo on Instagram. Um, really appreciate this. has been wonderful. I will have this. This will be live on my Instagram story for the next 24 hours if anyone you would want to direct to it. And then I will have it all edited up and onto my Instagram TV, hopefully by tomorrow evening at the latest. So it's um, been a real pleasure, Mehdi. I wish you all the best. Let's stay in touch, connect. I'd love to come down and visit and collaborate and continue to spread the great word of endodontics. Thank you so much. It must be late there as well. Get some rest. Uh, awesome. Will do, Matty. Patience and doing this, but great cause. Thank well you done. so much. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you for everything. And uh, thank you, Miriam, for getting us uh, set up. And um, wish you all the best, everyone. Thank you for joining. We'll be back soon with another episode. And everyone have a great night. Thanks, Matty. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. See you.